Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your ham radio Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. One of the things that often comes up is an infed half wave. And many times that's what the guy's using and it can be a great antenna. But it can also not be an infed half wave. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Let's just pretend that uh, this is a dipole. And um, this, uh, this dipole is being fed right here where my fingers are. And it's a standard dipole. It's something you could put up in your backyard. Again, we're pretending. And each side of the dipole is the same length, or hopefully it is. So if we feed it like that in the middle, its impedance varies depending on its height above ground. But basically, it's a fairly simple antenna. But there's a few things that you need to know about a dipole. Most of the radiation is going to occur close to the feed, close to the feed point. By that, I mean probably about halfway there. The least amount of radiation of the antenna occurs at the tips. Now, on this one, the tips happen to have a little flattened out re uh, region. That's a corona ball. And the reason for that is easy. High current, high voltage. So this can be several thousand volts. It also can be three, four, five, six, seven thousand ohms, depending. I said seven thousand. That's a bit high. Five thousand ohms. Um, on the ends. Now let's say that I make one side longer than the other. I intentionally do that. So now this is being fed no longer in the center, but off center. So this is now an off center fed dipole. An off center fed dipole. If we go back to the dipole, this is what? A half a wavelength. Now it can be shorter. We can put coils here or coils here. Coils here, guess what? Let's say that this is uh, mounted this way and we have a big coil here uh, so the antenna can be shorter. Now, what's wrong with that idea? Well, it's in the high current place. So you lose some of that radiation from the high current location. Uh, it makes it easier to tune in some ways. I won't get into that, but if it has coils here and here, um, it can be shorter, but again, it ruins the efficiency of the antenna. It doesn't ruin it, but it lowers it. So if we lengthen one side, it's an off-center fed dipole. Now, what if we move the feed point to here? Again, it's an off-center fed dipole. And if we move the feed point to here, again, an off-center fed dipole. If we feed it here and sh we're shorting out the middle, it's an end fed half wave. It's an end fed half wave. If we feed it here and we have a wire attached to that matching device and it goes down to ground or somewhere, that become this becomes an off center fed dipole. It's no longer an, an end fed half wave antenna. I would prefer not to call this an in-fed half-wave dipole. It is an in-fed half-wave antenna. This is a half-wavelength. If we feed it here, this is a half-wavelength. The advantage of feeding it here is it's easily matched to a piece of coax. Its impedance can be 35, could be 50, could be 70 ohms. Out here, it could be several thousand ohms. So the matching device uh, the balance, balance to unbalance, can be moved in and out just a bit on that wire, and that changes the impedance. At the very end, it's actually almost an infinite. The here it might be 5,000 ohms, and here 2,500 ohms. So as you move it along the length of this, you can change the feed point impedance, but this end has to also change. Let's say we want to configure this as a vertical. Uh, so again, we're talking about a dipole. So, so here's my sort of clumsy vertical. 
I watched a guy's video today and he referred to the radials as an RF ground. They're not an RF ground. They're the other half of the dipole. So this is a quarter wavelength. Like on the uh, DX Commander, he's got several quarter wavelengths and radials come out. Uh, basically, it's forming what? A dipole. And the impedance, uh, the impedance of this, because it's being fit in the middle, might be 50 ohms. Not might not require any matching. Maybe a fairly easy device to match. Now what happens if I add another radio? If, if they're elevated, they're pretty effective. And again, now it's a dipole, but one side has two legs. We could put on four legs and put them up above ground just a bit. If we bury them, if we bury this, this piece of wire or this piece of wire and this piece of wire, we bury the radials. What is the resonant frequency of those radials? Well, it no longer is whatever frequency they were tuned to before. The dirt has covered them up and changed the resonant frequency. So you've got to have bunches of these uh, for it to work. I did inspect a radio station that was putting up a tower, and every two degrees they had a wire. Um, and it, it worked pretty well. So this is a vertical. I don't have four rods, but I could, and these would be radials, not an RF ground. Not an RF ground. If it's above ground, you could, like several feet, you could call it a ground plane. The antenna could be a ground plane. Um, let's go back to this. Let's say that we configure this uh, and we put a wire from here to here. A wire goes from here to here. And now let's say that wire uh, allows you to make this whole thing uh, one full wavelength. What happens? Well, there's no open ends, so there's not a lot of noise. It's a fairly efficient loop, and it has some gain. So uh, a quad or a delta loop with a quad, which would have four sides, quad, um, can be a fairly quiet antenna compared to a dipole and a lot quieter compared to a vertical. So the gain across here uh, could be a couple of dB. Add on another element, you could have 6 dB in, in the antenna. I'm not sure about the gain numbers, but something like that. What do I have up in the air? I've got basically a dipole mounted on a boom. So this is the boom, and there are three elements. They look just like this. So this is a three-element Yagi. This feed point would be in the middle. So it's the driven element, the director, and the reflector. The reflector would be here, and the driven element here. As you move the driven element close to the reflector, the impedance changes, and so does it. It also changes with its height above ground. But it's a very effective antenna because you can turn the thing and point it towards somebody. If you put loading coils here and here, it's the same thing. You'll lose efficiency of the antenna. If you put the loading coils or the traps out here, it doesn't affect as much. It doesn't affect the gain of the antenna nearly as much as if the traps were here. So one thing you might notice on a TA33 or what Cushcraft or whatever it is, the traps are out here. They're out here because um, they can be uh, put on the antenna and not ruin the efficiency of the antenna. Ruin it, lower it. Um, so when you think of an antenna, think of the dipole. What the antenna that you're looking at be an in-fed or uh, some or ground mounted vertical with a loading coil here uh like say it's a vertical and they they tell you you don't need a counterpoise you don't need radials at the bottom does it make sense not to have this part of the antenna like this turns into a stake dirt doesn't make a very good radiator it doesn't make a very good dipole so if you remove this drive a stake and mount it the antenna is going to be pretty inefficient so anyway, usually when I look at an antenna, I think about it as a dipole. What part of it looks like a dipole? Um, and uh, I, I think that that's um, 
a pretty good idea uh, to look at an antenna and see what you think. Where is the loading coil? Is it at the feed point? If it is, um, it makes it easier for them to design the antenna and match it. But the efficiency goes down. If the tap point on that coil is near the bottom at the feed point, it's not nearly as efficient. The other thing too is if there is a, a, a box attached to the feed point and it heats up, that's a really horrible antenna because they're using that box basically as a dummy load. There are several ways it can be done. It can be done in such a way that uh, it doesn't measure with an ohmmeter as uh, a dummy load, but in effect, that's what it is. It could be done with um, uh, ferrite cores. So if the coil or the box at the feed point gets hot, it's a terrible antenna. Also, be careful about an infed halfway where at this point you're feeding it and it's getting hot. That's again losing power. It's a very difficult thing to match the end of a half wave or a multiple of a half wave. So as you look at a, an antenna, no matter what it is, think of it as a dipole. Uh, how efficient does it look? Where's the coil located? Um, is one leg of it put in the ground? I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Thanks for watching. I hope you have some questions and I hope you disagree with me. That would be really neat. So um, if you suspect I've made a mistake in my presentation, uh, say so. Just be nice in the way you do it. Um, I'm battling shingles along with some other things right now. So that's my view of, of antennas. I look at it and I think, okay, what about it looks like an antenna? It looks like a dipole antenna. 73 W6LG. If you haven't subscribed, uh, please do that. See you later.